Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Laura Noland coming to you from virtual PTC 21. Joining me today is Walter Cannon, Vice President of Business Development at Zenfi Networks. Walter, welcome back to JSA TV. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Always good to be online with you guys. Wonderful. Same here. Same here, Walter. So let's start off by telling our viewers about Zenfi Networks. Can you do that for us? Yeah, so Zenfi Networks started in uh, 2014, and I like to call it our startup version 2.0, where we had had a company back in the early 2000s, grew that company, and eventually sold it to what's now Crown Castle. Um, during that time period, we learned about a lot of different things. And one of the things we saw was there was gonna be a um, breadth of growth in the mobile area. And with the coming of then 4G and 5G, um, we knew that there was gonna be a lot of issues that had to be addressed at the infrastructure lo level. So we set out to try to address those issues. And we addressed them in a lot of different ways. Uh, and you, that's evident right now in the solutions that we provide in the marketplace, which are our um, very intelligent adaptive fiber network that we have. Are, it's pretty interesting what we've done. Uh, we actually designed a new cable plant that we, we were the first to use in the US, we believe. And then in addition to that, um, we have purpose-built network neighborhood network edge colocation facilities that house um, a lot of the mobile network operators, and then our wireless siting opportunities. And um, we continue to grow that as well, in addition to investigating stuff like smart street furniture and some of the other stuff that's happening now as a way to deliver um, better solutions for our customers. Wonderful. Well, I do understand that Zenfi Networks is leading the way in 5G development with fiber deployment in specifically New York City and New Jersey. Now, despite the pandemic, Walter, Zenfi made a huge impact in those cities. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, it's pr pretty interesting. You know, we've had a pretty phenomenal year on actually not just on the mobile side of our business, but on the telecom solution side of our business and continue to provide excellent connectivity because of the way we designed our fiber plant, we can deploy a lot faster. In addition to that, um, we've come up with some unique things that we will be bringing to the marketplace around you know, better ways to do siting. We continue to grow in New Jersey, um, have won some huge opportunities in Northern New Jersey where we're building. And we're also um, have built two new um, purpose-built network, uh, neighborhood network edge co-location facilities. I'd like to take a minute and talk about those. So these are unique um, in the fact that we saw that, you know, a lot of the, the, the way that these networks are deployed is really from a centralized data center or collection play, and then spreading out with fiber running out of them to um, various radio heads or macro sites or antennas. Um, what we wanted to do, we, what we also saw is that the cost of traditional data center space is pretty expensive. Um, we learned during the early years of the 2000s that we saw, you know, the early guys in the neutral host business um, deploying sites using um, quasi co-location facilities and it, everything from, you know, gas stations to houses to whatever. And we said, we've got to, there's got to be a better way. So what we came up with was the concept of a network, a neighborhood network edge co-location facility, which is basically shared power and cooling. Um, our sites um, are in a thousand square feet. We have um, most of the major carriers coming in, back hall is already there, front hall is already there. So this makes, this streamlines the effort for deploying um, small cells and um, other devices out in the, in the uh, cities. Excellent, excellent. So. Needless to say, Zenfi Networks has had huge growth and, and success during 2020, despite overcoming challenging times and, and other obstacles that may come your way, but you really pushed ahead. Could you tell us how you were able to do that? Well, um, it's by, I guess by diversification of 
a our revenue streams. We, like I talked about, the, um, the telecom side did really well. In addition to that, we also got a bigger push in New Jersey. Um, us merging with Cross River Fiber gave us a stiff, extensive fiber plant that we were able to continue to grow. We've added, I believe, to about 200 miles of fiber over the last 12 to 14 months. In addition to that, we've added a lot of um, thousands of site, new sites that we're deploying that's now in the contract um, as well. Um, so that, that's been our biggest focus is continue to do, look for new revenue streams, whether they be in selling our current solutions, our bread and butter, um, like wireless siting and fiber connectivity, or network edge. We we built two data set to these uh, network neighborhood network uh, edge colocation facilities in over a year and under a year. So you know these types of things is what's happening that keep us a joke to grow. Our team is really set to be innovative. Uh, I like to say we're a engineering construction firm that happens to own an asset, and that gives us the ability to. Uh, come up with the unique solutions for our customers. Walter, as you're looking to identify those additional income streams or revenue streams and, and really pushing that innovation through, what are some of the connectivity trends that you're watching closely in 2021? So yeah, so I'm glad you brought that up. Good question. So I think, um, and I like to always preface this by saying the things that you see on television a lot where the views of the speaker is not necessarily the views of Venify Networks. <laughs> so we spend a lot of time with um, a lot of different conferences and agencies and analysts and talking directly and interfacing uh, with our customers, doing lessons learned to figure out not just what are the current best practices, but what are some of the ideas we can use, we can bring forward and what is creative ways we can work on solving solutions for them. So um, with that said, I think there's, op we, we believe there's opportunity in um, sort of a shared virtual spectrum infrastructure as well to um, encompass, uh, to put on top of um, the platform that we've already built, uh, which will work with um, spectrums like CBRS, Wi-Fi and others. So we see some growth there. Um, I don't know if we'll necessarily be a Wi-Fi provider, but we want to support those. And we also want to be able to uh, help our carriers and, and our other customers utilize those spectrums. So that's something that's key to us. Um, we've had some initial talks as well with using these uh, facilities that we have. Um, we have our purpose built and as well as you know, in addition, total 45 different neighborhood network edge co-location facilities around the, around the New York metro area, which is pretty uh, interesting. And these are places where we could have, um, provide also content providers with um, access to um, being on our network and being a cross connect away from the carriers. You see a lot of the content guys, um, you know, the things, the thing guys, the uh, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, and others, they are coming up with sort of caching devices and smart, um, you know, mobile edge computing devices that they're deploying directly um, next to the carrier equipment. So that's probably another area of growth. Um, in addition to that, um, on the telecom solutions side, we've expanded and we have partnerships with companies like Packet Fabric, Megaport, and others where we're trying to just add another uh, niche to, to give our customers better service and, and make everything a cross connect away. That's the, that's the um, goal, right? Is to be is simplicity. Um, while you know simplicity might sound cheap, it actually is not always cheap, but it's the best solution, economic solution for our customers. A lot happening at Zenfi Networks. We will definitely be watching. Where can our viewers go to learn more and get those updates? So, hey, um, we are always you know, on all the social media platforms. Uh, we actually have now a YouTube channel as well. Um, and then last but not least, we have our website, uh, www.zenfi.com. So uh, 
or, you know, look me up, just call me. Uh, we'll talk to you at any time. Uh, people that know me, uh, I've always never been afraid to speak. So I hope you to reach out to us personally. Um, you can reach me on LinkedIn. You can reach me everywhere, you know, and just feel free to give us a call. Been pretty busy over the, during COVID. Actually, since we started the company in 2014, we've been growing at um, some very big rates. Uh, we've had, we have over 1,300 route miles of fiber, you know, um, over 5,000 nodes on the contract that point continue to deploy no, more wireless nodes. We had our best, again, I'll reiterate, we had one of our best years competed on the telecom solution side, providing connectivity to both wholesale carriers and enterprise customers. Um, when the pandemic started, we had one of our biggest customer our partners uh, had a problem where they had ordered a circuit, hadn't been delivered, and we delivered the circuit to them in 48 hours. So this is the type of flexibility that we're able to do. So again, reach out to Zenfry where we can be found all over. We will find you and wishing you much more success at Zenfi Networks. Thank you so much for your time here today, Walter. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And thank you viewers for tuning into JSA TV and JSA Podcast. Happy networking. Thank you.